Good morning, everyone. It is day 20, uh, 6 a.m. Up in Adam. Big mountain today. White Mountains. Musalak Mountain. Treacherous. Boom. Anyway, uh, going up. Uh, hopefully, I can get up over in a somewhat timely manner before dark. <laughs> Uh, but I'm ready to go. I feel really good. Um, so I guess I'll see you up top because there's not much to see all the way up. Um, and I guess it's really treacherous going up. It's steep. And with the rain yesterday, some of it's going to be wet and muddy. And uh, what Gut Hooks is saying, a lot of people are saying that the going down is worse than the going up because of the wet. So. Anyway, that's my story for now. Uh, I guess the views from the top are fantastic. Uh, so I'll get some video of that. Going up though, I don't know that there'll be much video. So um, what you see is what you get today. So anyway, uh, day 20, let's go. Hey, so there's one thing I've learned on this trail so far in these three weeks. Do not trust hikers. Trust is not the right word. Just don't believe what they're telling you. How's that? So, yesterday, Sobo guy was coming up the hill that I was going down. And I asked him, because I knew I was getting spent. I asked him, is there a place to camp anywhere down at the bottom of this? Or do I have to go up to the next shelter? He goes, you definitely have to go to the next shelter. He goes, there's no place to camp down there. I'm like, okay, thanks. So I went down to the river. That's that river that I had to ford. I just walked across. I come around the corner after I get across the river. Big old campsite. You can fit two or three tents there. Already cleared. Freaking, uh, sorry, I got a mosquito on me. Cleared. There's a fire pit. Everything. I'm like, what the hell? And it was right on the trail. You couldn't have missed it because you had to go around a corner and you walked right by it. So the other day, I get up to one of the top of the mountains and there's supposed to be water supply up there. I get up there, there's five people up there. And I ask about the water. They said, no, there's no water. There's no water. I'm like, damn. Well, I didn't want to go on to the next site. I didn't want to go on to the next site. Sorry, I got to keep walking. Mosquitoes are bad. So I go on to the next site, or I don't go on to the next site, I just stay there. I'm like, I can't. It was like 10 miles away. I'm like, I can't. I can't go that far today. I'm just going to stay here. So I'm, I set up my tent and everything. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go look. Maybe there's some pools of water somewhere off the trail a little bit. Maybe a little trickle here and there that I can. I went up there. It was like 200 yards away. People don't like walking off the trail very far. There was plenty of water. So I, I, re <laughs> I fill up. This is five people told me no water, no water. So I fill up and I go back. I'm like, you guys know there's, there's plenty of water down there. Oh, we didn't go down there. We just, uh, we were reading the comments off gut hooks from last week. And they said there was no water. So I'm like, I almost went on because they told me there was no water. So anyway, I have learned, and this is not, these are not the only two cases. I, several times I've asked somebody something and they give me actually or absolutely wrong information. So I've learned very quickly, trust your instincts, check it out for yourself and don't trust what anybody says. Because remember one thing, when one person's water supply is another person's, I would never drink from that if my life depended on it kind of thing. So um, everybody's different. Everybody has a different point of view. So I've learned that I go see for myself no matter what. So look where we're at here. I'm just turning the camera around. We got a nice, uh, can't tell if you can get it in there or not. Nice bridge out here in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, that's my story about trusting hikers. 
GoPros. This is where having a GoPro works. Okay, another story. So, I stopped last night. Really nice little camp spot. That place I was telling you about that the guy said wasn't there. Anyway, all these people come flying by me last night. They're all knocking out 18s, 16s, 18s. And they're in shape. They've been on the trail for a long time. I get it. Hey, oh, they're passing me by like I'm standing still. Okay. Can you hear that? Sounds like American Werewolf in London out here. So I don't know if there's wolves up here. But uh, sounds like there's a pack of them. Got into something. Yeah, they're too low pitched to be coyotes. So not sure what they are. Anyway, get back to my story. Um, these guys fly by me. I'm the slow and steady wins the race guy. So these guys, what they're doing is, these guys, what they're doing is they're hauling ass for seven hours a day. I'm going slow for 10, 12 hours a day. Nice, steady. Um, and it's like here, here's part of my deal. I get up at six o'clock, 6.30, or I'm on the trail by 6.30. I'm at some trailhead. Man, there's a bunch of animals up here making a bunch of noise. Oh, they're dogs, they're hunting dogs. Sound like a pack of wolves up here. <laughs> Is quite, these guys. Quite a pack of wolves. Can I take a picture of them? These are the guys making all the noise. Check them out. They're having a good old time. <laughs> they just want to run. So those hounds, they're hunting bear. That's interesting. So to get back to my story. Uh, hold on, I'll come back. I'm on some access road. I guess a lot of guys go hunting up here in this one restricted area. The bears are really bad up here, I guess. So they they have to come up and hunt them because the bears get, they come down into the uh, local houses and stuff and rampage, I guess. So they come up and I know, I know all you human rights or animal rights guys are gonna freak out, but uh, I guess it's a necessity up here. The bears are overrunning everything so um anyway get back to my story these guys pass me up all day long whoops camera's back <laughs> that's funny so the operator there's these waterfalls everywhere so these guys pass me up all day long but yet they don't get out of their racks. They don't get out of their tents till like after eight. They're on the trail, trail by 10. Can you imagine the amount of miles these guys could put under their feet every day if they got rolled out at six on the trail by 637? It would be ridiculous, but they like to hang out and bullshit and have a good time. So anyway, I dragged this on long enough. Okay. This field early in the morning. So when I said last night that it was a 4,000 foot elevation gain, um, over five something miles. 
Well, I've only got three miles left to go to get to the summit. And I haven't climbed hardly any. I'm barely at 2,000 feet. So I got a sus sneaky suspicion that, uh, and I haven't really started climbing yet. I mean, this has been a gradual climb. So, and I got another mile for this one water source, which is only about 2,500 feet. So I only got two miles and I'm climbing, still climbing another 3,000 feet. So I think it's gonna get really drastic pretty soon over the next mile. So, and you would think with the comments that are on gut hook that it's the, the <laughs> it's hell and it's the devil's staircase uh, walking out of hell. These guys, like I said, don't trust hikers. They make things so much worse. Now I gotta say, I might get up there and it might kick my ass. But it's one of those things to be seen. I will update you when I get to the top and tell you how it was if I'm climbing straight up rock slabs and all that. So anyway, climb up. This is the climb down. Okay, you ready? peak of Mount Muslock. me looking straight forward now look at what I just came down you can't even see it because of the Sun there you go I just came down those okay now I know why the guys are talking about only making eight to ten miles a day I started at six this morning I got to the top of the mountain four hours later at 10. It's one o'clock now and I'm still not down. It's taken just as long to get down as it is up because of the wetness and climbing down the rocks. So if, it, if this is indicative of anything that's coming up in the future, which I think it is, it should be interesting. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Oh man, these slippery rocks are treacherous. I got a couple of war wounds. Almost broke my arm just a minute ago. 
Woo! This is this is bad. Oh, uh, y'all stop worrying. I'm gonna keep going even if I got a cast on my arm. So anyway, <laughs> woo! This is rough, rough coming down after it rained. Let's hope it doesn't rain for like the next three weeks or something up here. Anyway. <laughs> This waterfall started at the very top of the mountain when I started coming down. And this still isn't the bottom. Amazing. Yep, took me exactly four hours to get down. So, um, that means eight hours to get up and down off of a 5,000 foot mountain. Woo! I would have rather walked eight hours of uphill than that last four hours of downhill. Wow. So, anyway, that's my story for now. Well, folks, end of day 20. Yes, I am in a hotel room. Uh, it's late. Bit of a bit of a it was easy getting down here I had to wait a while to get the shuttle the shuttle was only five dollars she was very nice um, dropped me off in town everything is sold out in town everything every hotel every it's packed down there and of course I told myself I'm gonna come into towns during the week so I don't ever have to worry about this about getting a room or anything so even the hostel was full. So, <laughs> so I'm calling around, calling around to every place and I finally call this place the Roadway Inn. And uh, the lady wasn't gonna rent to me because I'm a hiker. She goes, you'll tear up the room. I'm like, lady, I'm almost 60 years old. I'm not gonna tear up the room. I'm just looking for a place to hang my hat for the night and get cleaned up. So she's, she's grilling me and grilling me. I'm like, please, just, I need a room. So she gave me a room, but it's about two and a half miles outside of town, which is not conducive to going to get dinner, none of that stuff. Now I could call a shuttle, she'll come get me. She told me, she said, if you have any issues, call me and I'll come get you and take you wherever you want. So that's always a possibility. But I was walking out here from town and the guy stopped and picked me up and goes, hey, you need a ride back to the trail? I'm like, no, I just need to get up to the roadway in. So I only had to walk about 100 yards before I got a ride. Picked me up, dropped me off. Um, so I got a room. Um, I just made a reservation. I'm zero in tomorrow. All my stuff I need to do is in town. I can't do that from here. I'm not walking a couple of miles back to town tonight. There's a pizza and calzone place 10 minute walk from here. So I'm going to uh, go get a pizza or something, come back here, mess with videos, do my laundry, all that. Then I'm moving into the Holiday Inn Express tomorrow and I'll stay there because it's in town and it's cheap because it's a Sunday now. Plus I get points, I think I can get it for free. I made the reservation, I didn't even look to see if I have enough points for it, but. Uh, either way, it's right across the street from, it's, everything is right down there, so. I'll switch hotels tomorrow. Um, and get back on the road trail uh, Monday morning. Um, yeah. Interesting day, big mountain. I was talking to the guy who was giving me a ride. He's a he lives around here, but he uh, he goes up and does a peak every, like once a week. He goes up and does a peak, and he was gonna go today, but he changed his mind for some reason. Good for me. And then um, uh, so anyway, I guess he's gonna go up. He might go up tomorrow. So he said, well, give me a call on Monday when you get done with the post office, because I'm shipping some more stuff home. So when you get done with the post office, I'll give you a ride back to the trailhead. I 
Magic. Awesome. Thank you very much. So, Trail Magic still keeps popping up. I'm surprised. Everybody wants to help. Everybody seems excited that the hikers are out here. Even the shuttle driver, she goes, man, thank goodness you guys are still coming. She goes, everybody's going crazy out here. You guys are the only solid thing that we have. Um, she goes, it, we really thought that the hiking season was over because of everything. And she said, man, there's been so many hikers coming through. I'm like, yeah, there's a whole bunch behind me that are headed north. The bubble's still coming. And she says, thank goodness, we really need it. So uh, anyway, ranting again. <laughs> End of day 20. Sorry. It's one of those things. Uh, I will talk to you. Probably won't talk to you tomorrow. I might take some pictures in town or whatever, but uh, for the most part, Monday morning. But you'll know all that by Monday morning because if I get all the videos downloaded today and tonight and the next day on Sunday, you'll know all this and you'll be up to date. So anyway, I'll see you guys soon.